Hi, it's Karen here from The Learning Cauldron. In this video, I'm going to look at how to practice reading English texts in depth in preparation for the close reading, textual analysis, interpretation or RUAE paper in English exams. The article I'm examining is by British writer Georges Monbiot and it appeared in The Guardian newspaper. In it, he comments on the rising tide of consumerism globally. This is how I approach any unfamiliar text, using a sort of running commentary in my head as I spot each technique. As you'll see in the video, the techniques are colour-coded as follows. Word choice in orange, imagery in yellow, tone in green, structure in blue, sound in pink. Here goes. So let's start with the headline, The Gift of Death. Great hook because we're expecting the gift of life. Pathological consumption. Pathological has to do with disease, so obviously a powerful word there. Normalised. Now that might be a word you've not come across, but it's obvious from the, the normal at the beginning of it that it means it's something that becomes part of everyday life. In the first line, we can see that the word nothing appears three times, so there's obviously something you can say about that. Power of three, structure, and also the fact that there are three times that you see the word nothing, emphasising the fact there is not anything. Then moving on, we've got a great list here, and in that list uh, we've got the alliteration of belly button brush. We've also got the ironic tone of hilarious in inverted commas, and we've got a parenthesis near the end, so this is a bonus, this one. Um, moving on to the next paragraph, not quite as much to see there, but we've got the song, first day of Christmas, second, and then twelfth. So you would have to note the concept of the song there and also notice the short sentence by the 12th there in landfill with that powerful word landfill at the end hitting you. Then we've got an interesting term, hedonic stimulus or hedonic stimulus, two ways of pronouncing that. There you want to find out the meaning of the word hedonist. It means pleasure seeking, definitely a word to file away. And we've also got the image lasts no longer than a nicotine hit. So there again, lots of things that you could comment on in order to explain why that is effective, the negative tone there. We've also got an interesting word, ramify. So I would be checking that out if I didn't know it. It means to branch out and to continue having effects. And then we've got the story of stuff, the sibilance in the first line of the third paragraph. Um, and we've got some stats there, which we might be asked to comment on. And we've got the term condemned to destruction. Lovely, powerful word choice there. And here's a word, obsolescence. It appears as obsolescence or obsolete in many passages of this sort, so you definitely want to add it to your vocabulary. Technically, it means the state of uselessness. And as you can see from the passage, there are two types of that. And the way that they're shown is using the structure of parenthesis, round breaking quickly and becoming unfashionable. Moving on, we have at the start of the next paragraph, the word but. Now that's a three letter tiny word and yet it does so much. It signals a change in the direction of an argument. So always look out for that word but, it can be very helpful. Into the next line and we have the word utility, just a posh word for usefulness, uh, but a good one to file away as a synonym. And then we've got another use of a list. You can see a list of useless presence, just like there was earlier on, and that helps to emphasise the number of them and uh, the diversity of them, including the iconic bacon toothpaste, which I think I would pick out as being a perfect example of a useless present. Then moving on to the next paragraph, the fatuity, there's a good word, find out what it means, and the profundity of the impacts. Now these are words that are slightly unusual perhaps in your normal reading material, but you definitely want to know the, the meaning of them if you're going to be doing higher or A-level English. And then moving forward, we've got in the third line of that paragraph, a power of three, or rule of three, extracted and refined and combined. We've also got the assonance in refined and combined. So again, plenty to comment on there. And then we can go straight on into compounds of utter pointlessness. What a great, powerful phrase. And there's certainly something you could say about that, about how effective it is. For example, just the insertion of the word utter in front of pointlessness. And then moving on to the second last line of that paragraph, we've got the uh, very powerful word choice of screwing the planet. We can easily see here that this is an informal tone. Um, the register is not formal. And this is a perfect example of that. Also very powerful, um, you can see the feelings of the writer in that phrase. 
Next paragraph, people in Eastern Congo are, and then we're going to have some very powerful word choice here. We've got massacred, we've got felled, and we've got poisoned. Now, each of these words is very strong and could be used to show the angry tone that the writer is creating here. Um, he's critical of what's happening and he's angry about it. Again, we've got the word pathological here, so there's power behind that. And then we have a very useful image. If we were looking to describe the effective literary techniques, we could talk about the epidemic of collective madness. Epidemic having connotations of disease, obviously. Then moving on to the next paragraph, there are some statistics here. So you may need to interpret these statistics by saying that something has increased or decreased and how dramatically that has happened. Then there is an image, as you can see, snorting it like cocaine. There's a powerful simile. And word choice wise, grotesque. That's a great one if you had to comment on word choice, meaning something hideous and awful. On to the next paragraph, scrolling down. Yeah, the word choice of corralled is interesting, perhaps not a word you'd come across too often. It means to sort of herd or push people into, or animals, into a tight space. And then on to line three, participate in the festival of junk. What a fabulous image. So definitely something you could comment on there. Then looking at structure, we've got cut taxes, deregulate business, manipulate. The power of three is at play there, and you could definitely comment on that for a structure question. And then moving on with structure, we've got our little friend, the three-letter but, which shows a signal, it signals a change in the direction of the argument here. We've also got just below that, in fact, the use of a question. And often if you're asked a structure question, you can mention the use of a question in the passage. And again, we've got our old friends, the parenthesis just below that, so a structure question would be um, ideal for using that as a technique. And then moving slightly further along that line, we've got utterly useless. And again, nice, powerful word choice. And you could also use that word choice to show the writer's tone of criticism for this whole process that's ongoing in our planet. Moving down below that, we've got solemnity of the state, nice sibilance there, and might and majesty. So we've got some alliteration there. And then into the next line, oh, lovely, the joy, Terry the swearing turtle. So there we've got consonants, as one of the T's is not at the beginning, it's actually consonants rather than alliteration. But definitely a comment that could be made on sound there, to, which shows it adds to the irony and the critical tone. Moving on to the next paragraph, we've got a couple of words, one of them powerful, rubbish. If we're saying that this stuff is rubbish, that's quite strong. And dissing the idea. Again, this shows that the tone is derogatory and it's quite informal. These are not formal terms. Moving down a couple of lines again, we've got a lovely, short, sharp, blunt, well, you shouldn't, which is nice and emphatic. And again, we've got another but, a turning point in the final sentence of this paragraph. Moving on to the next paragraph, in the second line, the rising economic tide no longer lifts all boats. And that would jump off the page at me if I was looking for some imagery to comment on. It's the idea of the sea coming in, the waves coming in and lifting the boats that are perhaps beached on the sand up. But in this case, the boom is not enough to lift up some of the poorer echelons of society. And therefore, not everybody benefits from the increase in certain economic trade. Moving down a couple of lines, We've got trash the planet again, powerful word choice. There's been a lot of rubbish and references to that, which shows his opinion of these pla the plastic tat. And then moving down to for a few decades of extra enrichment, notice the length of that sentence. So if you had a structure question, it would definitely be worth, be worth looking at this. Um, it builds to a climax with everyone else who will live on this earth are diminished. So you could comment on the length of the sentence and also the climactic effect. Moving on to the penultimate paragraph, in the second line, there's a word prosperity, which is one that could easily come up in a passage of this level. So you want to know that that means wealth. And in the line below that, we've got two words which are quite powerful, opprobrium and ridicule. It goes on to talk about moral maze, which is a Radio 4 programme. And this is where I come back to the idea of concepts. It's things like the Garden of Eden and things like that. You need to know about general knowledge concepts when you're doing interpretation papers, because it's not just about the language, it's the thoughts as well behind it. And then in the last line, we've got a nice powerful word choice again, lunatics. So plenty to say about word choice in that paragraph. Moving on to the final paragraph, it is short but sweet. And I don't just say that because it starts with bake them a cake. There's an excellent list of 
things that you could do rather than giving the plastic tat which was listed at the start in the opening paragraph it gives you a list of things that you can do that show thoughtfulness rather than spending of money bake them a cake write them a poem give them a kiss tell them a joke simple things you can do to please people and then he rises to the climax but for god's sake stop trashing the planet powerful words again for a conclusion and the final line is beautiful in its simplicity and its brevity all it shows is that you don't, as in don't care. So that short, emphatic sentence is a great way to sign out. Now, these are the sorts of things that should be going through your head any time you read a new passage. Be looking out for word choice, imagery, tone, structure and sound as you go. And if you practice that over the coming months, when it comes to the exam and you open that paper and find a strange text, it will hold no fears for you because you're already in the habit of treating a text like this. Good luck and see you next time.